Thank you everyone for joining us today for our presentation, Identify, Onboard, and Develop the Best Nurses, How to Predict Nurse Success Through Validated Assessments. If you're looking to learn about prophecy, prophecy, then yes, you're in the right place. My name is Tom DeSantis from Advanced Practice Strategies, and I'm glad you could join us for the next half hour. When we're putting this presentation together, we tried to imagine what questions you might have, realizing some of you know us from Gnosis, some of you have had a brief introduction to APS at a recent convention or a conference, and some of you are learning about prophecy for the first time. Let's look at what we're going to cover today. How can we better hire and retain nursing talent? What is prophecy? How does it work? How can it be used across my facility? What impact does it have? And lastly, how is it different? Let's provide some context and look at why prophecy was developed. With a national turnover rate around 14% and the cost of turning over nurse between $10,000 and $88,000, for both direct and indirect costs, the financial burden can be daunting, let alone the problems this poses for patient safety. Developed for nurses by nurses, prophecy assessments bring an evidence-based approach to the areas we feel we can impact nurse retention, specifically when hiring and selecting. For example, are we getting the right people and placing them in the right roles? Onboarding, are we using data to personalize our education, or are we sticking to the one-size-fits-all plan that fails to respect the individual nurse? And lastly, developing nurses. Do we have the tools to identify and recognize top performers as they progress in their careers? At APS, we believe in the importance of the nurse's role in achieving better patient care. We work with over 150 health systems in the U.S. to build the best clinical teams, and we do this through two solutions. Prophecy, which you're here to learn about today, and Gnosis, our education and risk reduction solution. With these two solutions, we're helping our clients achieve significant and meaningful results, which of course we'll share today. And speaking of sharing, I'm pleased to welcome my colleague, Ann Hackman, who will not only introduce Prophecy in more detail, but she will share her story from when she was a Prophecy client. Ann Hackman is the Senior Director of Performance Management and Insights for APS. She is a specialist in metrics and data analysis with a specific focus on the Prophecy solution. Anne is a registered nurse with over 30 years of experience working in various clinical specialties in nursing administration. Prior to joining APS, Anne was the Director of Professional Development for a six-hospital academic medical system, where she coordinated the magnet designation process, NDNQI, clinical ladder, and nurse residency program for which uh, prophecy was utilized. Anne, welcome. Well, thanks, Tom. It's my pleasure to be here today, and I hope to share some of my personal insight as a Prophecy user, and also moving forward, any questions or things that the audience may have related to really the, the nitty-gritty, how do you use Prophecy within a hospital? So I'm, I'm excited to have this opportunity. So as Tom mentioned, my history with Prophecy goes back over about three years, um, and uh, we're going to talk about that story in just a little bit. But basically, we're kind of probably where some of you are now, and that is that we were feeling a lot of pain um, with high nurse turnover, and we were spending a lot of dollars and resources onboarding nurses, mostly graduate nurses, and then they would leave after the first year. So, you know, we were searching for a solution that was going to help us to reduce that time for onboarding, but we also wanted to make sure that the nurses felt both competent and confident about their practice. And we've been using something before that that had some video scenarios and things, but there's this big lap, lag time between when you know, the nurse took the assessment and when they got some results. And those results were in a paper form, and it was really hard for preceptors to apply. So we were just thrilled to find that prophecy solution, and we incorporated that into our nurse residency program and then later expanded it in other ways that we're going to talk about. But first of all, I want to walk you through um, how prophecy works and, and what makes it really special. We are a national leader in nursing assessments with over 5 million conducted so far and over a third of U.S. nurses uh, throughout 41 states. So, so pretty big depth of experience there in some of the large agencies that you see um, or systems that you see listed there. And we cover 40 unique areas of practice, so including the most common ones such as ICU, med surge, L&D, as well as some of the other ones such as telemetry and OR and home health. So the assessment's power lies in looking at three different areas. I really think that's what makes us different. Um, first of all, as Tom mentioned, it's designed by nurses for nurses. So you know, it's based on that firsthand knowledge of really you know, what it takes to be effective. 
Um, we're the only assessment company that has been validated by external experts, and they confirm that the assessments measure the right requirements for nursing jobs and that there's a statistically significant relationship between the assessment results and actual job performance. In fact, we conducted one of the largest studies of 800 nurses where we compared their assessment results and then asked their managers to um, actually review their performance, uh, observe a performance without knowing what those results were. And then we did a correlation, and the findings showed a 0 0.67 correlation factor, which is huge when it comes to assessments. So we, were, we knew we were onto something there. So third of all, it's, it's holistic. It's not just behavioral, which many hospitals currently use. Uh, we had one before we started using prophecy, um, but behavioral only tends to show you one portion of the of the nurse or the person. Um, and actually, you'll hear our behavioral is a bit different than some of those that are out there. But this assessment also includes both uh, clinical and situational competencies. So it, it helps you to know does the candidate if they know what they're doing in terms of technical knowledge for the job, but also how would they interact with people? Are they able to do, you know, to resolve conflict and effectively communicate? And and since, you know, HCAPS is such an important part of our reimbursement nowadays, you know, we want people that are effective communicators that present a positive image of the hospital. And then, of course, do they have the right personality to work in that particular unit? So I'm going to walk you through what some of the assessments actually look like. Um, this one is a clinical assessment result. So after taking an assessment of about 55 to 60 minutes, um, you'll get a scorecard, and it, these results are immediately available. And what's assessed in the clinical um, assessment has to do with, of course, based on role. So there are different assessments for uh, different clinical specialties, but it will cover these essential areas. Um, it covers administering medications, as well as problem solving, um, as well as, uh, you know, critical thinking, multitasking, those kinds of things. And then that report is illustrated in the way that this uh, slide shows. So it gives you a score breakdown um, of each of the knowledge domains that are reported. It also shows you not only the caregiver score, but compared to a modified ANGOF score. And the ANGOF is a statistically validated score using um, a process that is uh, the same as what is used for NCLEX and for national certification exams. So it gives you confidence that this is a, uh, an accurate benchmark against which you would uh, compare the applicant scores or the nurse's scores. Next slide. So here's an example of the situational assessment. Um, situational has to do with those, we call them soft skills, interpersonal skills. Um, and so these are video-based scenarios that um, ask the nurse to respond to, what would you do in this situation? So some um, have to do with clinical judgment, but a lot of them have to do with situations that cross across all clinical specialties, such as an irate physician, or perhaps a team member that is on playing on the computer. And you know, how would you approach that situation? And not only ask them what the right answer is or what they think is, but it also asks what is the least optimum answer as well or response. So they're really thinking in terms of best and least appropriate. Um, we have additional situational assessments that are very specialty specific and do involve clinical scenarios as well. And here's how a situational score is reported. They're grouped together in bands so that um, it's easier for you to, to look at them like you would in a college course, so an A, B, C, D, or E. Um, and each band has um, a statistical, uh, a significant rating that tells you that a band A, for example, there's the interpretation, says a greater than 75% likelihood of exceeding job performance expectations related to those interpersonal skills if you're in the A band. It also breaks down the um, different attributes or components of the situational score. So you can look at specific areas such as, are they high on collaboration? Maybe they're lower on conflict resolution because they're really good at collaborating but they don't like conflict. Well, how about critical thinking and customer service, honesty and ethics? So all of these areas are broken down, which helps you to develop some um, learning plans and professional development improvements as a result. And then this is a behavioral assessment um, uh, result. And um, it, it's a little bit different. Behavioral has to do with your 
personality or your core DNA. And we say that because, you know, we generally we don't change. We have specific personality attributes that we bring with us. And there's not necessarily a good, bad value to those. They are just they are what they are. Um, but this particular um, assessment identifies our strengths and uh, in terms of accountability, um, honesty, and conscientiousness, um, how fast we learn. There's a cognitive portion that has a, that's a timed for, um, couple of questions that has logic involved. So we, we learn whether they are fast processes or not, how they might delegate, and how they adapt to change. And all of those results go into a score report like this that's graphically illustrated. So it shows you where they are in a continuum and exactly a bell curve. It lists a description, a narrative description, as well as some behavioral interview questions that can be used so that if you're utilizing this behavioral assessment prior to hire, then you're able to um, focus some interview questions based on those behavioral attributes. Then this is really what makes us different. Um, we're able to, again, we've had such large scale experience now with um, assessment results and with that independent validation. So we've been able to cull through all of that data and really predict the impact of the product on a nurse's performance over time. We have a, an algorithm that we call that flows into what we call a Prophecy 1 score. And this is designed for most common nurse specialties, but it actually predicts a nurse's likelihood of success in a specific role. So it combines that clinical, situational, and behavioral assessment into one weighted percentage. And this is currently available in 13 different nurse specialties. Uh, the most common ones, of course, we've already talked about, um, but also some for cath lab, clinic, dialysis, endoscopy, and so forth. And we're going to actually launch a poll real quickly. We wanted to know, does your facility or system, as far as you know, use assessments in the hiring process? So here you can see a split, a little bit more majority don't. Yeah, take it away. Keep going. All right, great. So, so for those of you who are currently using assessments as a pre-hire process, or for those of you who may be considering it, you're going to be interested in this um, analytic report. So not only do we give you individual results, but this is a new analytic that's in development that we've designed for our Prophecy clients. And it's specifically designed for HR hiring managers and for CNOs that want to look at the assessment results for a specific pool of applicants. So you get to select the date. And you say everybody who's applied in the last three months, for example. And they flow into this report. It will show you their scores by um, specific assessment, so either clinical or situational looks like this, and it shows you that comparison to the ANGOF um, national benchmark, as well as the national mean and organizational mean. And then on the left, you'll get a list of each of the people who are included in this report. So um, it, this is an interactive report, which I'm, I can't demonstrate on our slides, but if you would be able to, you would select a person on the left list, and their score would pop up. So you could see specifically where they uh, scored in relation to everyone else. There's also a filter of experienced nurses and graduate nurses. And this would tell the hiring manager or the CNO, uh, you know, what does our pool of applicants look like? Are we seeing only graduate nurses? Are we hiring only graduate nurses? Are we missing any experienced nurses that we should have hired? And this will, will help you to, uh, you know, figure out those questions. And then the next level deals with the behavioral assessment. So again, the same pool of applicants, if they were all to take the behavioral assessment, it would print out like this. It would have their names on the left, and across the board then you would see um, all their different specialties and then their best fit. So as you're interviewing someone, it helps you to direct them to the clinical specialty for which they're best suited. It also is, uh, again, can be reconfigured. If you were to click just on med search, you could see the list change, and it would give the um, hiring manager the list and rank order of all the nurses who are most suited for med search, for example. So again, it helps you with that hiring process. Okay, this next slide has to do with the behavioral best fit at a drill down level. So this is just for one nurse, but it'll show that particular nurse and all those attributes that we talked about and then how they fit into the different clinical specialties. So again, this is helpful 
in that when we hire, oftentimes we hire into just whatever position is open, unfortunately, or for graduate nurses, you know, what they might think are their desired specialties, but we don't really know that. So this provides the basis of conversation with a new hire. And what it does is it sets them up for success. When we get a nurse into the right specialty to begin with, they feel good about their, their profession, they, um, you know, they feel good about the place they work at, and that sets up that whole feeling of I'm going to stay here and I'm going to work in this facility because they know me as an individual. The next slide goes towards the drill down on situational and clinical to those knowledge domains. Again, if you remember those reports, listed knowledge domains for each of those, and this tells you at a glance where their uh, performance level is, and that's really helpful for educators. I love this one uh, because you could spend a lot more time with someone in this sense, um, this particular one on collaboration and not so much on medication you know, accuracy because um, they scored pretty well there. The same way with under med surge, you know, they might need to focus more on endocrine and you know, less on GU. And, and what that does is, again, it helps you to use that precious time that you have with the nurse to tailor that learning path to just what they need and not so much boring stuff that they've already been over before. So we're seeing overall that with this approach, we're seeing actual customers that have achieved a, a really significant difference in nurse retention. So both at large and at small community hospitals, we've seen reductions in turnover of, you know, gosh, 80% overall, and it's being repeated over numerous clients. And that really is because they're finding that the first off, they're finding the best people, and then they're placing them in the right jobs because um, our system screens out those that may have some characteristics that are not matching up with your mission and vision, and that might also be a negative influence on the culture and cause other people to leave. So again, the data is based on evidence provided through 5 million assessments. And of course, that hits the bottom line. You know, that cost savings is, is right there. It's so easy to quantify. Every nurse that leaves your organization is going to cost you around $50,000 to replace. And actually, the literature is saying now upwards maybe of $85,000 to replace them. And that's just, that's just too much. We all have so much, just, you know, so few dollars and so many things to do with those dollars in healthcare. So you're seeing here that a regional health system, um, this is actual results, had um, a 19.5% turnover rate improvement. And for those 21 nurses, they had over a million dollars in cost savings. And the same in a community hospital with just seven nurses. So, you know, it's, it's pretty phenomenal when you begin to look at these, these results. We also have some anecdotal comments from real clients that support this. Um, this is Jody from University of Colorado, one of our great clients. She's talking about how much prophecy saves their nurse educator time, and, and they can help to fill in those knowledge gaps for the new hires more quickly. You know, you're not just sending out information to everybody, no matter who they are and what they need. And again, a small general hospital, working with prophecy, it's simple. You know, those results are right there. It's straightforward, and it helps them to ensure they have the right applicants moving forward. And they found that it's really streamlined a lot of that manual process that educators go through for, you know, recording everything and looking at the results and developing paths. This brings us to our, kind of our second value proposition in terms of using the assessments for onboarding, so what we, you and I refer to as post-hire. Uh, we're going to do a quick poll if they use or their facility assessments for the onboarding process to kind of customize the orientation or customize the, the, the orientation length. Again, very similar to our first poll. The majority are not using it for that way. So again, glad you're here to hear what Ian has to say on this topic. All right. Well, I'm glad to see that some of you are using assessments for onboarding because I think there's a huge application for that in terms of helping to streamline as well as to customize. And I'm real proud of this one. This is actually our slide uh, where I was working before, where we used Prophecy. And so what we did is by using that knowledge gained from the assessments, we were able to compress that orientation time, um, again, without compromising nurse competence. So, so we, uh, in the ICU, we reduced uh, by two weeks. Um, and in the med surge areas by one week. And those were averages because definitely you have some nurses who need that whole time, some who are even slower, and that's okay because you've got resources available for those who need to take a little more time. But factoring in the, just simply the cost of 
dual staffing that results when you don't have nurses independently taking care of patients. We calculated a cost savings of $85,000 in just the first six months with those, just the, that one, those two cohorts. So it's pretty amazing. But of course, we were worried that, you know, when we did that, that they were going to be either less satisfied, you know, thinking that maybe they were shortened by something, or that maybe because they were all graduate nurses that they weren't as confident. So we measured that. Um, we did a reassessment using prophecy assessments at the end of their orientation period. And those scores increased up to 20%. So we know that they were competent, their competency had improved, but we also used the Casey Fink score that some of you are probably used to that rating system. It has to do with graduate nurse confidence. It's a self-assessment that the nurses do, and we're really worried about that because we thought graduate nurses in less time are going to feel really not very confident, and oh my gosh, their results increased. Many of the scores were at 95% confidence at the end of that time, so we felt really comfortable with that process. And they told us, you know what, we felt valued. We felt like we were important because you treated us as individuals. So bonus points we didn't even expect to see on that particular approach, but, but really exciting results. So as we began to see those results with pre-hire and with onboarding and minimizing that time, we also began to see where we could match preceptors with like-minded new hires. So we looked at those behavioral assessments and we matched those up with people who were equally um, fast learners, for example. And what you don't want to do is match up a detailed person with a detailed person because they don't get any work done. So we knew that and we were able to really customize based on their, their behavioral assessments and design that training to meet their needs. But then, you know, people start asking questions. It's like, well, what else do you have with prophecy? How can we use this across the board? Well, one of the neat things is that the basic behavioral assessment includes leadership qualities. So you can actually pull out a leadership report on every single person who's taken the behavioral, and you can begin to identify who are your shining stars, you know, who could take on a quality improvement team, or who might be your next charge nurse. And then they actually have assessments based on role. So you can have nurses do a charge nurse assessment. There's one for preceptors and there's one for clinical nurse managers that can be used to identify readiness to accept a position like that or it can be used for, um, for learning. You can do a whole, you know, we've had people who do a whole group of preceptors, look at those knowledge domain breakdown, teach a class to those specific deficits, and then reassess at the end. Those kinds of issues and those applications are awesome for just realizing benefit. They're also really good if you're on the journey to magnet. And as a previous magnet coordinator, I can tell you, you know, that data, data, data is all about, you know, what magnet is all about. So having those prophecy reports just makes it so easy to submit that information to magnet. And they really can appreciate the value that you're placing on the individual nurse and not just everybody doing the same thing. So we actually created a crosswalk to, um, from Magnet to Prophecy Reports that is utilized by some of our clients and also supports the pathway to excellence. And then lastly, you can use these same assessments for competency assessment, for your annual um, assessment, for uh, creating learning needs assessment, uh, again, a Magnet criteria, um, and also for benchmarking nurses who want to uh, transfer to another position. So there's just a ton of different ways to use the assessments. And one more poll, does your facility or system use assessments for you know, incumbent nurses, for preceptors, for nurse succession, for competency maintenance? Great, so again, even more glaring than the last ones. Um, a lot of you are not, and what's interesting, Ian, is, and you can attest to this, a lot of our clients are, uh, are finding this benefit and starting to implement it uh, with their whole their launch of prophecy. They are. I think one of the, the things that we found that was just a, an unexpected opportunity was, again, the questions from other stakeholders and on how they could utilize it. So what we found was, of course, HR, I mean, they, they loved it because it helps with employee selection. It, it really minimized the numbers of, of interviews that they conducted because they could pre-screen and really focus on those people that were the high you know, potential candidates. Um, it helps with employee retention. It helps to decrease turnovers and transfers. And all those EEOC concerns, because we are one of the few um, validated uh, uh, assessments that meet the EEOC guidelines um, so that it is able to be used as a pre-hire decision making. So, so human resources really loved prophecy. 
But that wasn't all. The next group, of course, that loved it was us, the nurse educators, <laughs> because it really helped to help us streamline orientation and to customize that. It also motivated the nurses to really create some self-directed learning paths. You know, they could see their results, and then they start, started thinking, well, how can I do better? You know, I want to be better. It also offers quantifiable validation. So it's not just a guess of, of, gee, I think you need to work more on this, but it's really quantifiable. So you have those neat discussions with the nurse on where their professional development path is going. And it helped us, of course, reduce orientation, lots of good feedback right away, and good record keeping. And then lastly, nurse managers started asking, I, you know, I want to do this with my whole team. I want to see how my team performs on the clinical level or how, how they're doing on the behavioral or, or maybe situational if they're having an HCAPS issue. And so they can actually do these assessments as a whole department and they can identify engagement because that's a subset of behavioral. So you can look at staff engagement. You can look at who are your next leaders. Um, they used it for targeted performance improvement and regulatory compliance. And again, boy, not much record keeping to go on with that. Um, and it really helps, of course, reduce their costs for orientation time. So, so we made some true believers out of a lot of stakeholders in the organization. Thank you, Ann. That was terrific. We actually have had a few questions come in during the course. Some of them, and you may have answered, but I think it's worth answering them again. Can you assess just one of the competencies, for example, like clinical? Absolutely. Um, when you have an area that, like we have several clients who've used this, but they've, they've had done a root cause analysis. We had a client that found that they had medication error rates that were too high. <clears throat> so they administered excuse me, <clears throat> the uh, pharmacology assessment to all their staff. And what they discovered was that there was a lack of understanding of Coumadin and heparin nomogram. I mean, it just came on spot on by doing the assessment. So yes, you can use them individually or you can use them in combination, which is what's recommended for the onboarding and pre-hire process. Great, and there was a question about reassessing. So I know in, in the platform we have A exams and B exams and you talked about it with um, you know, the onboarding and the orientation. So is there a way to track improvement? There is. And we actually recommend that you use the assessments as a baseline and then to be able to quantify readiness to end orientation. You might reassess at that point. We often suggest that you start with the med surge exam for graduate nurses and then reassess in their particular clinical specialty when you're ready to launch them into independent practice. Um, you can also be using the pre and post for an educational intervention. If you're doing a class, say a dysrhythmia class, for example, you can start out with a baseline assessment and then do a reassessment at the end. So Tom mentioned the A and B versions. Um, first of all, every assessment, um, every time you go in, the questions are scrambled. So there's no way for a nurse to go and sort of write down all the right answers and then go back in and take the test. It just doesn't work. But secondly, each of our assessments has a B version, which means that they are the same knowledge domains but different questions. And that way, it's very applicable in that pre and post setting. Great. One more just came in. Does the nurse, whether it's an incumbent or an applicant who has taken the assessment, do they get a copy of those score, uh, score reports uh, or are they just for the managers and hiring managers? You know, we leave that up to the individual hospital. They're certainly able to be shared, um, but it does, when you get a scorecard, you do need to sit down and go through that with someone. I wouldn't want to give that to them and just allow them to, you know, look at it like they would, you know, a, a questionnaire in a magazine. They really need to sit down and have an interpretation and a discussion, but absolutely you would want to share these um, with each nurse. Great. Uh, that was the final question. So, Anne, thank you for joining us today and giving us this insight. It was a broad uh, brushstroke, and if anyone wants further information, we're happy to give that on a one-on-one -on -one basis. We're actually also going to make this recording available. We'll probably post it on our blog next week, so if you'd like to subscribe to that, we're at www.aps-web.com. So, again, thank you for joining us, and we will uh, talk to you soon. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Bye-bye.